This week's episode of the Low Ball Show, I'm actually joined by the first ever returning guest, um, Kevin Mackey, the director of Breaking City. Now, the kind of difference with this episode is we're actually going to be looking at more topical events, the event being what unfolded in the last few days in relation to licences and the pyramid system um, playoff schedule. Um, so, uh, Kevin, again, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, no problem, pal. So, I mean, firstly, I suppose my my first question is on it, um, to make things a bit simpler. With the, the licences and what's expected, is that something in the criteria of that as a director of a club you know about quite early on? Yeah, everyone was made aware, I think, October-ish time uh, last year the criteria for anyone who wanted to be considered for the playoffs, they needed to have the, the bronze licensing. So there was plenty of time. And is that, in your opinion, from your stance, um, at your position, is that easy to obtain? I think there's been mistakes made by the SFA, um, you know, and, and the SPFL, to be fair. Um, the, the criteria um, was... I would say there's too many clubs had to try and get the criteria, but there was no guarantee there'd be any club actually needed it because you needed the criteria to get into the playoff to be eligible to be to go into League Two if you were successful. So we've probably seen, I don't know, I'm guessing seven, eight different clubs spending considerable money, probably, you know, I would guess an average of 15,000, if not more. So you've seen 120,000 come out of the coffers of the the bank balances of these clubs, and there's if if you know they've got one club that's ultimately got a chance to go through, and um, why they couldn't have left it to then allow the club that was successful the time to go and get the license would have been more sensible. But they made the rules; everyone knew them, and uh, you know we move on from there. And when, because obviously the. The league and um, for the Highland League was uh, quite hotly contested going into the last day. Um, I think it was a, a couple of goals, the the kind of difference there on it. Um, so obviously it was um Bucky and yourselves that were there, and there was there, there was a couple of goals, um, difference there. Now, the, the reason I'm saying this is because you two were leveling points minus I think it was two goals. Of a difference, two um, minus two goals, yeah, difference, um, which put Bucky in top. Now, when they were you know confirmed as league winners, um, and they'd be moving into the playoffs, I assume it must have been known at that time that they didn't have a license by the, the powers that be. And then, um, even with that information, the games were scheduled, uh, tickets were sold. Um, in fact, I think the first leg was supposed to be today. Uh, um, East Co-Bride um, and from what I've seen that was a sellout that's now had to be refunded um, because it was only a couple of days ago that they came out and said oh yeah they don't have a licence um, and then proceeded to print off the list of the clubs and licence levels and who does who doesn't and what kind of you know the bronze, silver, and whatever else licenses that they've got. I, I suppose my my question with you, are, are, are the opinion um, of you on that was, do you think that went a bit far before they then announced? By the way, they don't have a license. Yeah, I mean, if I can go back, <laughs> the point you know, I think it's quite clear now when you read Bucky's statement that they were made aware on numerous occasions that they weren't passing the criteria. And they hadn't asked for you know time as such on on certain um, parts of the criteria. I think the the bit that that's frustrating for me is that if the club were fully aware and they've admitted that they had missed the, the derogation deadlines etc et for for an application to extend, if the club were aware 
um, that they'd missed the deadlines. Um, why wasn't the Highland League made aware prior to them arranging all the end of season fixtures? Because yeah. it apparently goes back to March, and, and that's the issue I've got. It's not sour grapes for Brecon City. We probably had our hand on the trophy and let it go. But the fact of the matter is that surely the Highland League should have, and I don't know if they were aware, and that's the question that's not unanswered at the moment, but surely the SFA, the SPFL, should have been advising the Highland League of the clubs that had missed the deadline because the Highland League were still rearranging games and right up to the death. So the, the other two teams that were vying for promotion um, the Saturday before the season finished, Fraserburgh were away from home to Stras Bay, who were bottom of the league by some distance and by all accounts didn't have a team, so they were having to field trialists. That was on the Saturday. On the Monday, there was a rearranged game and it was Stras Bay away from home to Bucky. Um, on the Wednesday, Bucky were away from home to Stras Bay. And these three games seen something like 18 goals scored. And then on the last day of the season, there's a rearranged game on the Saturday. So you've had Saturday, Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, and Strasbe have played four times, twice against Fraserburgh, twice against Bucky. At that point, um, I think uh, Fraserburgh knew how many goals they needed to score if Brecon and or Bucky were to drop points. Fraserburgh could actually still be champions. They needed to win, I think, 8 or 9 nil. They won 11 nil uh, that day. Um, so, you know, from our point of view, um, we ourselves in Fraserburgh should have been made aware at that point before we went into the last game of the season look, Bucky don't have the criteria. That that's my gripe. It's not trying to say that, that you know the Highland League fixed the games to make it easier for Fraserburgh and Bucky. But there has to be some, you know, you have to question the sport and integrity of the whole thing because actually what you're saying is that so a club could decide they're not going to spend the money going for the bronze standard. They will decide that they're going to put the money into uh, buying better players go out of their way to try and win and maybe be successful winning the league. And then there's nobody eligible from the Highland League to go through to the pyramid playoff. It's madness, you know, utter madness. The whole system needs looked at. You can't have a pyramid system brought in and then have, you know, three or four teams desperate to try and get into that pyramid system and then fail by two goals or, you know, rearrange fixers not coming in date order as per cancelled, etc. It's, it's quite frustrating for us um, to have known that, you know, Bucky now have failed and had no chance of going through. They've admitted that. that that's the bit that's annoying for me because when you look at the Lowland League, um, Celtic and, and Hearts can finish first but won't be champions. Yeah. You know, so say Pride had finished third, they would have been the ones that got promoted. So surely there has to be something, common sense, that if you don't have the criteria that allows you to go up, it shouldn't mean that there's no representation from that league when you've got teams desperate to, and who have paid the money to get the criteria. That, that's that's the, the better point that we are trying to focus on. And I think as well, and you know, I'm 100% in agreement with you that there has to have been you know, some sort of thoughts or plans or something from the league put in to say, right, in the event that a team wins the league that is not licensed to do so, um, what do we do in that event? Because this couldn't have been a shock to them because they're able to sit and see very early. You know, probably before yourselves and things are aware, they're able to see who does and who doesn't have a licence in regards to clubs going, going down and who's vying to get that and who isn't. So they should be very well aware, right, this is a distinct possibility. So we only have a contingency plan in place. One of the things as well that um, I feel sorry for, and not just for, you know, Bucky, but yourselves, uh, Fraser and things, they're fans. Because yeah. there's there's fans there that, and you know, you know yourself, and I know we've, we've spoken many times about how kind of great home and away your fans are and, you know, the, the level of fans that, that travel. But fans that are paying, you know, good money travelling home and away, and then it gets to the end of the season. And, you know, for Bucky f fans, for example, there's nothing now. That's yeah. that's that that's cut off for your fans, and, and I say this because of where the positions in the league were. Again, it's not like all right, maybe we are stepping in, and maybe you know this has been great, and we've got an end to the season now. Um, 
to, to do that, nothing. So now from the Highland League, there's no further involvement. Absolutely. And, and I think that was brought <laughs> home to everyone last year. So we played Bucky on the last game of the season. We scored with three minutes to go and we finally won the game 2-0. We probably had the best part of 1,500 fans up there. And, the, you know, the, so the clubs won the league, celebrating on the Saturday. Everything was fantastic. And by the Monday, you're back down to earth to think, right, wait a minute, <laughs> that party's finished. You've now got two games in a playoff. And then if you're successful at that, you've got another two games to go to try and get back in. So I feel for the Bucky fans, because they'll be the very same. They've been up there, you know, from hero to zero, in the space of three or four days. And that's why I continue to say, forget about Beacon City, the system's all wrong. You know, it's absolutely wrong that you go and win a league. And then that's when the business end just really starts. You've not only got to then beat the team in the Lowland League, you've then got to go and try and beat Club 42. In this day and age, it's madness. It doesn't make sense. And I, I do, and obviously, without kind of digging in, I know, like, you know, yourselves is look any of the clubs have been given the criteria and this is what has to be met. I don't envy who goes through that because I did download it the other night and it is 110 pages long. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, madness. And I think, you know, <clears throat> one of the things that's got there is, <clears throat> if you look at it, you, you've got, you know, Clyde, uh, Clyde are sitting at the moment, Club 42. They might avoid, you know, playing in the playoffs. They've got silver standard, right? So you've got to get all these points covered, which is a huge cost, right? And you have to then make sure that you're keeping on top of them. Now, I understand what the SPFL's done. They've raised the bar, you know, to bring the standards into it to avoid maybe, I think, Bonnie Rigg when they didn't have a, a seated stand, you know, when they got promoted up. Um so they're trying to raise the standards within the grounds. But just an example, um, when this came out, we wrote to the league on Thursday because we are 110% confident we've ticked all the boxes and we've got bronze. We haven't been told by the, the SPFL, SFA, whether we have actually got bronze yet. And we wrote on Wednesday, just sorry, Thursday, to confirm, right? Please just confirm to us that, you know, we have got the, the licence criteria that was required. Now, I haven't had a response yet. And I know, I think there's another meeting on the 15th of May. So even like the deadlines is quite confusing. So, you know, you had to have everything in or you had to ask for an extension by a certain date. Um, but we, we've not even been told yet, you know, confirmed that we've actually got the, the licence that was required. But I'm, I'm more than confident we do have everything. You know, the doctor, the accounts have been signed off by the SFA, so we know we've ticked that box for audited accounts, etc. But again, I come back to the fact that where's the logic in actually lumbering all these clubs with that additional expense when there's no guarantee that any of them will go up? You know? Yeah. It, it, it's utter madness. And, and also, when you look at the fact that, um, I believe when all this came out, there are four or five clubs within the leagues that don't have a status either. Yeah. Now, yeah. The, the, the point I'm making, that, and if I jump to, you know, we speak about the, the system and how it works, if you jump to being a Bucky Thistle fan for a moment and think, so there's teams in there that haven't, uh, haven't met the criteria. We haven't met the criteria. We're not allowed to try and push in but they're allowed to remain in. Yeah. And it, but my, my point to that is it's the standards. You know, I agree that, you know, for the both Highland and Lowland League, there's, Lowland League was lucky because East Kilbride were given the criteria, so there wasn't any confusion on that. But obviously for the Highland League, with um, Bucky not getting it, there was no contingency plan put in. But you're also having to turn around and say, yep, so East Kilbride get a bye, yeah, there are like four or five teams in the leagues that don't have that, but that's okay for them because they'll either, and I can only assume, and this is very much an assumption, that they've perhaps written for extensions or whatever they've done there that I would make the assumption that was the case or that's what would be branded as being the case. Um, but again, it's the it's the no plans. They're, you know, it's not to say like, with yourselves, you know, you're confident you've done everything to meet 
all the parts of the criteria. I and, and I can say this, I know probably with, with, with your position you can't, but I, I can certainly say you wonder if it's easier to not write back to clubs just now because there's no argument for their clubs to then take a place in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 100%. And I agree with everything you've said there that, you know, the, the I mean, the standards are fine, I would say, if you're, say, like a Premier League club or a Championship club. Right, so you know the criteria that they've set is obviously makes sense for these these bigger clubs who can afford it. If you just go back and say that you look at Brora, um, who have got um, Brora have uh, I think got to travel some distance to go and see a doctor, right? So there's no health centre or anything else there. So you've got to go and uh, travel a bit of distance, and it's mandatory that they've got a doctor at a game on a Saturday. Now you know we're the same. Like you know, you to try really hard is really difficult to be fair. And and how often on a Saturday do you see a doctor coming on the park at a game? I mean, I'll be honest yeah. and say I think in every game over the years I've went to, I don't think I can ever recall a time because and, and I think this was also part of the, on that subject. I thought you've got normally the um, like St John's ambulance staff or, or whatever that are all medically trained. You know, in a lot of clubs, you get these volunteers that, that are medically trained, that are there, that are able to um, are able to do that and are able to provide the assistance and then take somebody to a hospital or a medical centre should there be anything further required. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and that, for me, was one of the ones, <clears throat> other costs that you're putting on all the clubs, because these guys will not come free. You know, they, they, they'll need paid, they'll need the expenses and everything else. And so, you know, you can call an ambulance with something serious or you've got the physios there or you've got the St. John's ambulance, etc. There's there's an awful lot of things as well, like, you know, Breakin City Incorporated. And so we obviously had a, a share issue and um, we've become a limited company. If we hadn't become a limited company, we didn't need to pay to get audited accounts. So we're trying to do something to encourage the fan base to get involved in the club. We had a share issue, incorporated, become a limited company and we needed to get our accounts audited, which was thousands of pounds. But if we hadn't become a limited company, we didn't need to get the accounts audited. So, you know, stuff like that, it just didn't make sense. And I think that the lad at the SFA agreed with me. But said, look, it's been passed now, but we'll look at it for next year. Our money's down the drain now. You know, we've spent all that money, and we've finished second. And we, we've got no chance of, of, you know, it's just to regroup and go again next year. But all these things, we the club shouldn't have to be thinking about what if scenarios. The league and the SFA, etc., should have all that covered. It should be quite clear that they should be spending the time to say what if somebody wins that league and doesn't have. What do we do? You know, yeah. we should a vote, but you should have a pathway to move on up there. That's exactly what you should have. You know, you should, in my opinion, whether Fraserborough finish second or anyone else. There should have been uh, there should have been a note to say that if you don't have the criteria and you finish first, you won't win the championship. The same as as I said earlier, uh, Hearts and Celtic in the Lowland League. And and I know because you and I that the last time you were on, um, that was the first time I discovered this, and, and when we discussed it in regards to winning the league, not having any financial reward. Now, the, the reason I bring this up again is because for all the money that you have spent throughout the course of the year and um, throughout the course of the seasons to then get to the end and, you know, the position that you're in now, because I'm sure you've had quite a few outgoings and things, you know, throughout the course of the season and to now be in, as you say, regroup and go again. Yeah. And all that money that has been spent and the additional stuff like, you know, if you're going to like, the accounts or different areas that they're looking for, um, things to be ticked off and covered yeah, for money on isn't in, I don't believe, the best interest of the club or any clubs within the leagues where there's not a lot of money floating about in. Yeah, there's no money there. There's not, there's not a club, I would say, in the Lowland or the Highland who can honestly say that they're making a profit or if they're even, you know, breaking even. Uh, I would say that, you know, most people's target is if at best try and break even. But all these additional costs that's coming in, and that's what I come back to earlier on when I speak about, you know, League Two, and you look at, you know, the club that's in League Two and the costs that they've got to, to run with, 
and they've got to give players contracts, etc. Otherwise, they won't sign for them. So they can't give them a contract to say that you've got a contract, but if we do go in the playoffs and get relegated, your contract's ripped up. Well, that's fine. Thanks very much. I'll sign for someone else. So all the costs that they've got, they travel with them if they're relegated, and the parachute payment doesn't cover it. So, you know, we're all being lumbered with additional costs, but the risk to reward zero. We win the league. You don't get paid a dollar, right? Yeah. So that's it you know um you know the via play cup this will be well it's premier league sport premier sports cup for this season i'll be really interested to see who's invited in now from the highland league because i would come as close as i could to saying i'll resign from the highland league if it's bucky that gets invited in so they've not passed the criteria they've tripped up Fraser Baran ourselves from having a chance of getting elevated up you know because they've not had the criteria we've spent the money and got it and I would be, yeah, I would be asking questions if they then get invited in. You know, if there's one that they the, the class them as being the winners and they get invited in the Premier Premier Cup because they get rewarded with, I think, a minimum of 25,000 there. So again, it just makes a mockery of what's the sport and integrity? What's the point of going for the bronze? Let's just try and win the league, get the money, and actually spend the money on better players. And, and you know what? I totally, totally agree with you because one of the things that I thought was I'd be very interested to see um, who's in. Um, and who's asked to be in the uh, Premier Sports Cup next season. And to be fair, I mean, it won't be too long until it's found out because it normally starts pretty early. Um, yeah. But I, I'd also be very interested, and I know, granted for yourselves and you know any other uh, club in the Highland League, this won't be of any kind of benefit for now, but it'll be very interesting to see the stance that's taken in this for moving forward as well. Because surely now when all this has came about, the procedures, the the way they go about things, how this has all came has got to be looked at and changed. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and I think if I could come back to one point there um, and just qualify that when I said, you know, nobody's making money in the Lowland and Highland, there was one team that drew Celtic this year at Parkhead. And if there was one team that drew Celtic, who got rewarded handsomely, <clears throat> I mean, what are you spending? Two or three grand to get a consultant to work their way through all the points that are needed. So, you know, for, for my, you know, again, the, the annoyance of the club, you've got the situation now where <clears throat> we want clarity and everything moving forward, you know, because it does feel as if it's heavily weighted uh, against you. And, you know, there's always something comes up. There's always criteria comes up. I think as mentioned earlier, you know, last year in the playoffs, we were all expecting the game to go extra time. No, no, it's the only playoff in Scotland that goes to penalties. This year, you've done everything you can to get your bronze and get your licence and get everything done. And then um, you're turned and said, well, look, you've done everything you can. You've finished level, two goals behind. Um, but um, the team that's won it uh, don't qualify. So it's a free pass to East Kilbride. Now, to be fair to, to Mick and the guys at East Kilbride, I would be wanting the same. I'd be wanting straight through. I, you know, I wouldn't be wanting uh, yeah. some to get promoted from finishing second. But I think the league have to be looking. That's the Highland League. I would say it's their responsibility. It's their rules. It's not. I can't see it being an SFA rule. I think it will be the um, Highland League. It's up to them to get this whole thing sorted out. Whereby you don't have the license, you can't be crowned champions. And. Honestly, no, and again, what I'm going to say here is, is very much an assumption, but you can't imagine Club 42 being delighted now that the team that they're going to play over two legs, I've got a break. Correct. Now, wh whether they take friendlies or not, you know, let's be honest, you and I both know whatever a result is and a friendly is a result, it's just maybe a time to you now try out other players, use different tactics, whatever else. You know, there can be many, many different reasons used for a friendly, but ultimately you wouldn't imagine that they're going to be fully exerting themselves. It's going to be the first start in 11 that are going to be on, you know, for 60 plus minutes of the game. So whoever finishes as Club 42 are going to be going up against a very fresh team. A hundred percent. And that's, you know, if we jump back a minute to look at what I'd said earlier about the Strasbourg's four finishing games were Fraser on the Saturday, Bucky on the Monday, Bucky on the Wednesday, Fraser on the Saturday. Now, no disrespect, but, you know, you want to be playing these teams at the end of the season. Absolutely. You want to be playing these teams that know they've finished well at the bottom 
Um, they're not going to get relegated because the other teams don't have the licences to come up, I'm led to believe. So Club 42, they're at a disadvantage just now because they're having to work their socks off to try and get points on the board. So the guys will be playing 110%, more likely to get injuries, fatigue, et cetera, et cetera. And then what happens is, you know, it's great. You know, I'd love to be in East Cobride's shoes, which is fantastic for them. And I wouldn't be complaining if I was, because you're getting, you know, you'd be saying, right, advantage East Cobride, because you're getting the break, et cetera. So, you know, from that point of view, um, you know, as I said to you previously, I genuinely hope that East Cobride get into League Two. You know, I, I would hope that they do get into League Two. Um, and that's not being disrespectful to the club that finishes Club 42. But I think that the SPFL have to have a wake-up call. They have to understand that that 10 teams in League Two are so competitive now that a team starts off a season with a few injuries. A good team could end up in the playoffs. And there, there is a reason why nobody has ever returned. You yeah. need to look at that. You can't have Neil Doncaster saying it's my responsibility to look after the 42 clubs, but who cares what happens to Club 42 if they drop through that trap door? Because nobody's coming back. We've tried. we finished third, first, second. It's costing us a fortune. It doesn't make sense. It absolutely doesn't make sense because you get to the end of the season and you're not even, you know, you're not even close to thinking you've got a chance. You know, extend League Two. It makes sense. Let youngsters come through to get games, playing against men, and allow kids to develop. And and that's the only way forward. I've seen a stat recently about how many homegrown players in the Premier League are, are from Scotland. It was astonishing, you know, the percentage of players that start on a Saturday in the Premier League. Desperate to see kids coming through in Scotland. And as Ad says to you, Greg, just to, to touch on your point um, before we'd, um, we'd come on the show, that... I've had discussions, you know, on this podcast, you know, in between the, the last time you've been on now with many different people. And one of the common themes and occurrences, whether it's a manager or player in the championship, League One, League Two, you know, SPL, whatever it might be, a very common theme to come up is I don't get why we've not get extended leagues. I don't understand why we don't have extended leagues. And, you know, many guys up and down have all discussed it and said it, I'm assuming and a poor assumption granted, but there is obviously some sort of reasoning behind what would be given as to why that's not the case. But if you look at, as you rightly said, no team's ever come back in. Now, and I'm just going to use a few clubs here as an example, but if you look at Breakin, if you look at Albion Rovers, if you look at you know some of the others, it wasn't like you know, they were always, you know, bottom tier, you know, League Two. So as if these clubs were, these clubs had great successes. You know, Albion Rovers not that long ago had won and, you know, had been promoted into League One. Granted, had been relegated and down. But the point being that these aren't clubs that have kind of sat and always been, you know, teetering about Club 42. Now, there's been yeah. successes in recent years, and I think that just kind of heightens the competitive nature of day leagues to see that a club, the clubs that can be right up here, can then, you know, as you say, it can be anything, it can be some injuries, it can be, um, you know, kind of changes about that can happen. Clubs can go down, and then you see how competitive, especially, I would say, more so for the Highland League. That's you know, also just looking at the league tables would we kind of grant you that, but how competitive the Highland League was, for example. And yeah. you look and you go, Well, there's so much more that could be put in and how much more exciting kind of League Two could be. Yeah, yeah, but without a doubt, I mean there, there's there's quite a few good points there. Um that like so if we just look on first of all, uh the Highland League, I think. OK, uh, it's only my opinion. I think there's probably at most, at very most, a handful of clubs that have actually got aspiration to get out. Now, it'd be interesting for me to find out how many people applied for the bronze status, because that would give you an indication. Um, but there'll be some clubs there, I would say, who are absolutely honest and have got no appetite whatsoever to be doing anything on a Saturday other than playing in the Highland League. I'm not sure, but I would assume that there'll be quite a lot 
of the same thought process in the Lowland League, yeah. right? And they're delighted to be in that competitive environment, and that's their level. We've got, and I would have thought that there's not many clubs in the second division or trying to get out of the Lowland or Highland who have got aspirations to say get to the Championship. So you've got the League Two, and you look at that, you've got ten teams. So I think if you ask any manager in League Two, do they enjoy playing the same team four times each season, excluding cup games? I don't think anybody will nod their head. The majority, if not them all, will shake their head, saying no chance they like that. So when you hear nonsensical arguments that I class them as, saying that you know uh, Neil Doncaster and the rest of the guys say you know the forty-two clubs will not cut the K Cup anymore; that's cut up just now. That's fine, but see if you ask your Albion Rovers. Your Brecon Cities, your Cowden Beasts, your East Stirlings, to name but a few, your Berwick Rangers, if they now could have looked back and cut that cake up a bit more, but they were still in a league of 16 or 18, I think every one of them would be nodding their head. So the, the absolutely, to help Scottish football, because the kids start at grassroots. Andy Robertson started, well, he was at Celtic and then he ends up at Queen's Park, Dundee United, bang, probably one of the best left-backs that you know, Scotland will ever produce now. So we need to be looking at how we can get kids into these teams. Now, if we don't extend League Two, all that happens is the managers will not take a chance playing a 16 or 18-year-old because the leagues are that tight. They need to be getting the points on a Saturday. So he can't be bringing kids in. Whereas if you had a bigger league and the guys know, yeah, we're hoping of finishing the top four, but we're going to finish in the top eight, the last five, six, eight games of the season, they can be bringing kids in, you know, yeah. and trying experiencing them and bringing them on the 20 minutes to go, when you've got a league that's that tight, there's no room for error at all. I mean, you look at it now with a few games to go, and I thought your point was really good there. Yes, the pyramid system was brought in because you had the teams like East, Cobra, sorry, East Stirling finishing bottom every season. But the pyramid system has now served its purpose, right? It's so competitive now, it's got rid of the people who were finishing on the trapdoor edge every season. But none of them have come back. And it's wrong that Berwick's now where they are, that Albion Rovers are where they are, that, you know, Cowden Beast's where they are, to name but a few, and Brecon City as well. So, you know, they, I, I just can't understand why they don't accept that they maybe need to go and find more revenue generators to add another six teams into League Two to then accept that, yeah, we need to find another, you know, 100 grand because in this day and age, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be that difficult to find specific sponsors, you know, maybe for each league. You know, I don't know why you maybe carve up and leave the Premier League and the um, the Championship, and then look for additional sponsors. But yeah. you know, make it work. Find ways to make it work because the money that's been lost by these clubs who are now being run as basically amateur clubs is considerable, and the money, like say, if you say you know, East Kilbride and Brecon City and, and the rest who are putting in to, to try and get out when there's only ever got one team got a chance of getting out is nonsensical. So you could actually elevate the teams that want to come up. Probably you would find there might be six, there might be eight, you know, but at least the other ones in these other leagues have got a chance of winning the league each year. So then they've got a chance of maybe getting into a playoff. But the other thing they need to be looking at is... Don't make it so severe for Club 42 or Club 48 to when that door opens, you're gone forever. Because that's wrong. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. And it's so unfair. And, you know, I, I totally agree that, you know, looking at the, the teams that have kind of have gone down, you know, as we always talk about, there's nobody's ever went back up. And, you know, you could argue if only one or two teams had went down, then perhaps it was, you know, something within that. But the fact that there has been several teams throughout the years that have went down and none of them have ever come back up um, kind of says a lot more um, yeah. on the statistic on that. One of the things that, and just to get a final touch point in the licence that I was quite interested to know was, and I think you'd be the best person to ask this to. So with yourselves obviously going into the last day of the season and knowing that, you know, it was all about goal difference. Now, if, if, if I talk just kind of slightly differently and that deficit had went your way and you had one, but at that point, you 
because I, I know obviously what you're saying you had written on Thursday, or the club had written on Thursday, to see if the, the licence has been granted. So even at that point as well, you're getting into the last game of the season, you're so tight on the goal difference and you know what the, the guys need to do in the park and everything else. But even whatever way the results went, you still wouldn't know at that point whether you've been granted the licence or not. And I think, and I'm not 100% correct on this, okay, so I stand to be corrected, but we'd applied for derogation on a, mm -hmm. a couple of points previously, and this is where Bucky would fallen down, because you had to apply, I think, by sometime in March. Um, so you got these extended. Um, if we had, you know, one, um, the next meeting, I don't think, is till the 15th of May. So, you know, if we had one last Saturday, we scored the three or four of the five goals we needed. Um, we had ticked all the boxes, but the actual decision isn't made till the 15th of May when, the, when both playoffs are finished, well, the first one's finished. So, you know, it's it, for me, again, you know, that, that, that doesn't make sense. It should be that they uh, gave you the deadline to be allocated. Um, and I think it's just a process. It's maybe just human time that they're needing to go through all the applications. So, you know, whilst I, I did qualify by saying I'm pretty confident we've got it, we haven't actually been officially told as yet that we, you know, we do have it. And I think, you know, for, for me again, uh, our game against Brora uh, that was cancelled was the 23rd of December. That was the game that we played last Saturday. So it was cancelled on the 23rd of December. And, you know, Brora would be a stiff task to go and play at the best of times without having to go. <laughs> I think you'd be glad to go up there and try and get the three points, let alone go up there and smash four or five goals. Yeah. So again, from a personal point of view, yeah, um, you know, in the future, I would love to be playing against the Bay at the end of the season. And I suppose, again, best to ask you, moving forward in regards to the, the licensing, and I know we could obviously sit, and we could go back and forth probably all day on changes we'd like to see and things we'd like to do. But in regards to communication and the licensing, I mean, for next season, what would you like to see? Yeah, I would like to see it that they've got, um, there's clarity. Um, I think that you would like to see that there is, um, there's a system that for the people who are the ambitious ones, they can't get tripped up. So they can't be knocked off uh, if they try their best, if they finish second, and the one that's win it don't have and got no intention of getting the licence. Um, they Or for any reason they don't have it, then the the club that's second um, gets promoted through. But I'd like that all decided by December. You know, coming down to the last minute and not knowing what's going on. Yep. Ludicrous. You know, it should be that there's a cut-off date at least four months before the season finishes. So everyone's got the chance. They understand what they need to do and go and get it done. And I, and I think one of the things that I'd also like to see, and, and, I, and it really frustrates me, but the amount of money, as I said earlier, that you know probably the six or eight clubs that's been you know, a task to go and get these licences have spent, that could have went into new facilities. It's the kids of the future. Give them better change of facilities, better medical rooms, better chill-out rooms, you know, stuff like that's where I'd rather be spending the money. Yes, we need to keep to a standard to tick the box for the SFA and the SPFL, but you know, just because you're a limited company, having to go and get audited accounts, when companies house, companies house does not ask Greek and City to submit audited accounts, right? We do not have to submit audited accounts to fully audited accounts to the to companies house, but we have to do it to the SFA and SPFL standard. It's madness. Yeah. Utter madness. You know? So you're actually a government legislation, you tick the box but you don't tick the box for the football criteria. doesn't make sense. That's, that is, to be fair, I think probably one of the most nonsensical things that I've heard is that... It doesn't that, make sense. Um, and, and just to, also just to kind of clarify on, because I know maybe some people listen to this and think, oh, but if a team's going to win it and not meeting criteria, um, then teams are fighting for second place to then go and get promotion. But as we'd spoke about earlier on, in the Lowland League, you've got your B teams that could all theoretically win the league um, and could finish one and two. So it would be, I'd assume, the team that's third that's then going to um, move on because the agreement is they can't win anything. Yeah. So, so you think if you're able to do it in that sense, 
then in the same, same thing, if a team's not got a licence and not been met the criteria or deadlines or whatever it's been, then just as we'd have done in the Lowland League, they're not eligible, so we'll move down. Correct. Correct. And that's particularly when you're spending the money. Right. So it's not like everyone's spending the money. Some could decide not to spend it. Um and then, you know, t- take their chance and just say, Well, we've got no we've got no appetite. That that's the one thing that you know that does frustrate me. You're in a league in the situation perhaps in the Lowland and the Highland, where there is, as I said earlier, and I keep saying it, probably eighty odd percent of the teams don't want to go up. You know, they're happy where they are. It'd be like Beacon City if we ever did get back into League Two, but no appetite whatsoever to go to the Championship. Not on a month of Sundays. You just want to enjoy football on a Saturday. And if you can finish in the top half of the second division, or if you had a good run one year and you got in the first division, but that would be you. would be floating about there. You know, that, that would be the ambition of this club. But to be able to, you know, not have clarity. And, and I think one thing that's quite important that I clarify, because the, the kind of the headlines in the press in the last couple of days, it feels like I've maybe been misquoted on the fact that, you know, that there was maybe bias towards the games that have been rearranged at the end of the season in the Highland League. Um, I think where, you know, you've got a team that's consistently finishing at the bottom, all I would say is that you wouldn't expect them to be playing, you know, so often a Saturday, Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, and particularly against rearranged uh, games against teams that have actually vying for the championship. You know, there is definitely an edge there because there's such a gulf in the standard between the bottom four and the top four. Um, or sorry, the bottom two, the bottom one, or the, you know, certainly the bottom of the league. So, you know, it wasn't, I was never saying that the Highland League had, had a bias towards Bucky and Fraser, but I was just saying that it needs to be a consistent approach when there yeah. are rearranged games and it should actually go in date order of cancelled. Wherever possible, it should go date order of cancel. And again, you know, just me, and I will be quite vocal, so I'm not speaking about the Highland League behind their back, but they had us up to uh, Brora on the 23rd of December, the second furthest distance we travel in the Highland League. Some guys will get home on the Christmas Eve, you know, early hours of the 24th. And that game is probably odds on to be cancelled at that time of year up there. And then the, the early um, January, they had us up to Wick again, rearranged you know so I would just like to see us in this league that we're in to have a bit more sensible rearranged of the fixtures as they come when they come out where the furthest away we play them when the weather's decent yeah it's easier on Wednesday night when the games are cancelled if you've got shorter distances to travel but listen we'll be in the Highland League next year I wish Mick and all that all the best no disrespect to the Clyde's or Strenars or whoever else, but it's in Brecon City's interest to get East Cobride out the road. And that's no disrespect to the others that's in the Lowland League. You know, we'll go again next year and see how we get on. Yeah. And do you know again, Kevin, you know, thank you for taking the time to come on. Um it's it's really appreciated. Um you know, hopefully there is a lot of kind of clarity that comes out off the back of this. Um with the kind of what's been on in recent days. Um and there's a lot more clarity surrounding it. Um, next season, you know, as you say, um, you'll be in the, the Highland League next season. I'm very sure we'll be right up there uh, come the end of the season again. Um, and really, all the best for um, next season. No worries. Perfect. Thanks very much for that. Thank you. Cheers. Catch you later. Thank you. Bye. Bye.